Welcome back everyone to episode 2 of our multiplayer racing game. So we left off last time, we went ahead, constructed a little car here right in Unity. Now the reason why I did it this way here is because I wanted to have the parts all separate so we can go over how everything is going to basically work together and independently. But this video we're going to focus on the wheel colliders. Now before we get into the wheel colliders, one thing I did forget at the end of the last video was to go ahead and save our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder. And I'll just call it scene. Z. We'll go ahead, we'll save the scene. Now you can hit Control S, Command S, come up to the menu, pick whatever one you want. I'm just going to go ahead, go into assets, go into the scene folder. I've actually already saved it, but we'll go ahead and save it again. Go ahead and replace the old one, and there we go. Done. So everything's saved. And I generally save every one or two edits. Just constantly hitting command s simply because if unity crashes uh you've lost everything since the last save generally speaking so save often all right so let's go ahead we'll select our first tire here which will be the front left tire and i'm going to go ahead and add a wheel collider to it now unity gives us two ways to do it we can go up to the menu here under component go to physics and go ahead click wheel collider and that'll add it for us i tend to use the add component menu myself and when I'm over here, you can get to it by going to Physics, Wheel Collider. Uh, but a lot of the stuff in these menus, I don't know where they are. And I always get lost. So I just type in what I'm looking for and I'll just pop up. So we'll go ahead and we'll add it. Now before we go ahead and start looking at any of this stuff, let's go ahead and we'll just shrink it down. I'm going to come over to the wheel. Whoops. Let's zoom in on this bad boy. And we can't see the collider. Let's go ahead and turn off the mesh renderer. Come on, where is it? There we go, now we can see it. Not sure why I wasn't showing. Uh, but let's take a look at this. You notice it's a circle with a line. Kind of like a piece of pie with uh, a cut in it. So this circle is going to represent the circumference of our wheel. And the line is the sus suspension. Now the problem is that we have it attached to our tire, which automatically has a rotation of 90 degrees. So if you had a tire that wasn't rotated 90 degrees and was in the proper position for you, this is great. You can just go ahead and add it on that way. But since our tires are, came from originally cylinders and we had to rotate them 90 degrees to get them here, we can't attach them this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the mesh renderer. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our wheel collider. And I'm gonna come up to car. And we're gonna go ahead and create an empty. And I'm gonna call it right nope sorry this is the front left and i'm going to call this wheel and i'm going to go ahead and add it to here and there we go and just to make sure it's in the same position as our tire is i'm going to go ahead child it to it zero it out and then take it back off and it really doesn't matter where we put it. I'm going to put it right above it because the tire eventually is actually going to go out under it anyway. So let's go ahead. We'll take the tire. We'll turn it off. At least the mesh renderer. And let's look at this wheel. It, in, it went ahead and not only grabbed the position, but grabbed the rotation. So we're going to take that rotation off. And there we go. We got it the way we want it. You want to make sure that it's round and pointing down. You can't see the point too much. It's just a little bit right there. It was throwing me off for a second with the arrow that was thrown up because it's a green arrow as well. And I was like, hey, it's pointing the wrong way. But no, it's pointing in the right way. So let's go ahead. We'll come over to the side here and let's go over what all of these do. All right. So first up, we have mass and mass. Think of it. The bigger the mass, the more force it can exert on well, other game objects that have rigid bodies or that react to physics. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to the Unity documentation for wheel colliders on the official uh, course page. Or sorry, the lesson page. So go ahead, check that out if you want more of an explanation. We have quite a bit to cover today, so I want to I want to explain what these do. But you might be able to, if you still don't understand, go ahead and take a look at the uh, official page. Hopefully that will help you out a little bit more. But radius, uh, basically how big you want your tire. How, basically the circumference of the tire. So we'll go ahead, we'll play around with that when we actually turn our tire back on. 
So I'll set that back to one. Suspension distance. This controls the this little line that comes down and you should always have it pointing down. And basically think of it as how much suspension do you want in this tire? So if you want a lot of suspension, you're gonna want a bigger line. Little suspension, littler line. Let me start at 0.1. And suspension, uh, the center here. Basically, if we had a tire here, we could offset, like if this was an actual, the tire, I guess mesh was attached to this, you could go ahead and change the offset of where it's positioned. But since we have it on an empty game object, we're gonna go ahead and leave it right where we want it, right dead center. And we'll move on to uh, suspension spring. First up, we have spring. And the higher the number, the bouncier it's gonna be. It's basically how hard it pushes to, to, to keep that suspension. So if you have a, a large suspension distance here, and the best way to actually get familiar with these is just to keep playing with them, and you set a high spring, Basically, it's going to be really bouncy in the sense that, well, it shouldn't be really bouncy. It's going to push really hard to get it. So you can end up with a car that bounces quite a bit if it, uh, the road's a little rough. So we'll go ahead. We'll set this back down to one. So the damper will go ahead and make the spring, I guess, move slower. It won't be so, so fast to respond. Uh, so th the more you increase it, the slower it will get. And next up, we have target position, which again is another float. And the way this works, I didn't realize you could go above one and below zero. But the way this works is that if it's at zero, your suspension will rest at the fully extended position. And if it's at one, it'll be at the fully compressed position. And I guess if you actually go over, you can bounce up higher and lower off. I did not realize it actually went higher than zero or one but by default we're going to have it at zero because that's basically what a car naturally sits at so the next part we're going to look at is the forward friction and the sideways friction if you notice they actually have the exact same properties and to be quite honest i don't know what a lot of these do but i do know that the stiffness factor affects basically skidding and well we'll just start off forward friction uh, you know when a car is at a starting line and it guns the uh, the gas pedal, it just slams it down, the tires will spin out before it, it actually grabs traction and starts going? That's what your forward friction is. Sideways friction is if you're driving along and you turn too sharply and a car could slide sideways, skidding. This is what your sideways friction is. Now, I don't really know exactly what a lot of these properties do, but I do know if you change the stiffness factor, lowering that number will increase the slide that you have. And that's basically all I've done with my cars. I don't, I've don't. i played around with these values a bit, but really, it's for me, it's just the stiffness factor that I find works the best. So let's go ahead and uh, turn our tires back on and start making four wheels instead of just four tires. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn our tire mesh back on. Oh, look at that. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a child of the wheel. And we'll go ahead, we'll select this, and we're going to go ahead and start playing with the radius until it's bigger than the wheel. There we go. And we want it pretty close to hugging it, size wise. Uh, we could probably get a little closer. Let's just try five. Would five be a good number? That seems to be about right. Now, of course, when we actually put real tires on here, when we actually get our physics of our car down to the way we want it and we start importing real car models, this will change, but that's fine. We got a good start here. Uh, we are going to have to move it up because you're going to want this above your terrain. So we'll go ahead and let's just grab the whole car and move it up. And we're going to go ahead and do it for the rest of the tires as well. We're going to turn them into wheels, so to speak. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this at one for now. Just some default values. We'll play around with this. 
everyone's going to want their car to behave differently. And hopefully by the end of the month, we'll still have a little bit of time left over that maybe we can go ahead and start adding things like upgrades to our game. And we'll be changing stuff like this. Like maybe there's a new set of tires that has better traction or, or whatever. But anyway, that looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead, duplicate it. And we're going to move it. Whoops. Uh, we'll just child it to the front right. Just so I can actually go ahead and... This time, I'm just going to zero out its position. We'll keep the negative 90 rotation. Of course, if we come over here, there we go. We'll unchild it. And we can actually just go ahead and delete this one now. We will have to rename this one. And I like to have them in a specific order. I like to have the left first. So the front left and then the front right. And these can actually start being called tires now. Well, no. Let's actually keep the naming just so we know exactly what tire it is. Sure, we could just go ahead and go to the parent transform. But we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. All right. So we got this one. And we're going to go ahead, just delete the back ones, and duplicate these ones. Easy peasy. We'll move these back to about there. That looks good. And we'll rename them. Real right, rear left, and again, Like so, I just this is just the way I like it. You can order your hierarchy a little bit differently. I think for now, go ahead and keep it this way here while you're following along, just so you don't get lost. There we go. Now, if we go ahead and hit start, we will get an error here, and it says that it requires an attached rigid body to function. Now, some people get a little confused, think you got to put a rigid body on the tire, but that's not the way it is. Basically, as you go up through the hierarchy, it needs a rigid body. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add it right to the parent object here, the, the car. And we'll just go ahead, type in rig. Make sure you get the rigid body, not the rigid body 2D. We'll go ahead, we'll add that there. And before we go over the rigid body, um, let's clear this and just hit start. There we go. If we bring it up a little higher, Then hit start. There we see it fall to the ground. The rigid body is what makes it drop to the ground. And let's go over quickly what a rigid body is. Since we're already over the 10 minute mark, let's just go ahead and cover the, the important things that we're going to be using in our scripts here. And we'll go a little more in depth on rigid bodies in a later episode. So to start off with mass, mass is the exact same as we've looked at with the tires. I think of it this way, if you have two game objects with mass, one has a mass of 100 and one has a mass of 1, and they collide together, the thing with a mass of 100 or the thing with a greater mass is going to push the thing with the, the smaller mass around. So the 100 mass is going to push the one mass around. Drag, uh, when your game object's moving around in game, forward and backwards, drag is a force that just basically stops it from reaching its potential maximum speed it's just a force that slows you down so when you're dropping let's say a pencil you know from a certain height the air makes drag so you know basically stops the pencil from just constantly accelerating so the more drag you have well, the more force that's going to be used to basically slow down the acceleration of the, that item angular drag exact same thing but for turning or rotating an item around and use gravity, we are actually going to keep this on because, well, we're going to be doing jumps and everything else. And, well, we don't want to be jumping off into space. We're going to want to have something to pull us back down to the Earth. Now, as far as is kinematic, interpolate, collision detection, and constraints, we'll cover those later. Uh, we're probably never actually going to touch them in this game. Not that I can think of off the top of my head anyway. So make sure you go ahead, save your project. And I guess I'll just see you in the next video. Bye-bye.